Alchemy is the art of liberating parts of the cosmos from temporal existence and achieving perfection, which, for metals, is gold, and for man, longevity, then immortality, and finally, redemption. H.J. Shepard, 1986 Greetings mortals, and a capital day to all. I'm your host Simon, welcome back to the Library of Gnosis. Gold is one of the seven metals of alchemy. Gold, silver, mercury, copper, lead, iron, and tin. For the alchemist, it represented the perfection of all matter on any level, including that of the mind, spirit, and soul. The symbol for gold could also be used to represent the sun as the as above in astrology, or the as below as son of man Jesus. The color associated with Hermes is gold, but from his Roman name, we can see that he is also associated with another metal too, mercury. Did you know that mercury is used in gold mining? First, mercury is mixed with the materials containing gold. A mercury-gold amalgam then is formed because gold will dissolve in mercury, while other impurities will not. The mixture of gold and mercury is then heated to a temperature that will vaporize the mercury, leaving behind the gold. This process does not result in gold that is 100% pure, but it does eliminate the bulk of the impurities. Mercury was first used to extract gold as many as 3000 years ago. Gold is heavier than most other particles, so alternative methods typically use motion or water to separate the gold from the lighter particles. But alchemists may have the last laugh after all. Physicists can now make gold from lead and mercury in giant electrical devices called particle accelerators. Although it is a very expensive and inefficient process. Of course, this is the base art of creating gold through, quite frankly, brute force, and not the subtle means which the alchemist uses. Hermes is the god of liminality, of crossings. Hermes is the joker in the deck of cards. He can play any role. He is at the center, the middle pillar, which allows him to move in any direction. To both encompass the firmness of Saturn and the transcendence of the Sun. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun and is the stepping stone towards unification with God. Mercury was of course known as the guide of the souls of the dead into the afterlife. You have all heard of the Christian Trinity. But there is also another trinity, Jupiter, the biggest planet, the god of order. Then you have the second biggest planet, Saturn, the god of chaos. And then you have the goddess they are fighting over, Gaia, Earth, or home. This is the trinity I am talking about, but the number associated with Hermes is not three, but four. This is because he is the fourth god that unites chaos and order, spirit and flesh. The sun, the marriage between heaven and earth, between the square earth and the round heaven. This is where Metatron's cube comes in. As you have the flower of life overlaid on top of the cube, squaring the circle. Metatron was also said to have been the only god or angel to have come down to earth and taken on the flesh. He was said to be the closest soul to God and was said to be the voice of God. Now had I not mentioned Metatron, you would have assumed I was speaking about Jesus, wouldn't you? As Hermes is the god of liminality, the number four also represents the four cardinal directions, east, west, north and south. In my previous video, I mentioned that there are four stages of the alchemical great work too, and Toth was of course said to have been the inventor of alchemy. Hermes is also the youngest son of Zeus, 
and the youngest of the twelve main Olympians. Zeus himself was also the youngest son, before becoming king of the universe. Did you know that Hermes had a best friend, by the way? I will leave you with a quote from William Shakespeare. The words of Mercury are harsh after the songs of Apollo. Thank you for watching. Sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. It has been a stressful three weeks, to be honest. I've been learning a lot, and I've been traveling a lot, celebrating midsummer and all that. I hope you're all having a good summer. May Apollo shine on you. Next time around, I believe I will be doing a video on how connected the Bible is to Greek mythology, which would make sense, seeing as some of the books of the Bible were originally written down in Cohen Greek. Oh, and also, please remember to uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, hit the notification bell. As you can see, I don't really have an upload schedule, so it uh, might be wise if you want to stay up to date. And for those of you that want to read my material instead, uh, go support me on Patreon. Uh, above $6 level and uh, you get all the, the scripts for free included. I guess it's not free. <laughs> Anyways, thanks to all my Patreon so far that are supporting me. It means a lot. I can't really offer much, so it uh, it's really appreciated. Anyways, see you next time, mortals.